Hello everyone, Ian from Ozen Engineering here. Today we're going to start our discussion on PyADT. This is the Python library that interfaces with the AEDT API. Um, this is really cool because it's going to let you leverage other libraries such as NumPy or SciPy, Matplotlib, things like that, so that you can do some advanced data processing and visualization. It's a powerful tool. It's really good at streamlining and automating tasks in the electromagnetic and thermal and mechanical analysis. PyAEDT is just one of the packages of PyANSYS. You can see there are many different packages that you can check out. I'll only be covering PyAEDT though. You can get started with scripting by opening up the help and looking at the scripting help PDF. This will be one of your main resources when learning how to script in Maxwell. Now, Something I want to talk about is the different Python environments that we're going to be interacting with. I'm not going to cover VBScript because I think you should just use Iron Python instead. But to that point, if you want to compare how they work, the scripting guide has a really good table that shows the counterparts between VBScript and Iron Python. We will, of course, be talking about CPython and PyAEDT, though. Let's start getting into it. CPython and Iron Python, those two are going to be your two environments that are compatible with PyAEDT. Iron Python is an implementation of Python that integrates with the .NET framework, which allows scripts to run directly within ANSYS products. This guide is not a very, uh, it's not a very good guide for Iron Python. For that, I recommend just looking through the examples as well as checking the documentation on ironpython.net. We'll talk about Iron Python a little bit more when we start talking about the script execution environment that's built into the electronics desktop. Our main focus is going to stay on PyADT and PyANSYS though. If you want to check out anything that we cover today in more detail, I recommend checking out the PyANSYS documentation on docs.pyansys.com and go into the latest version of the PyADT documentation. We're going to get everything set up outside of the ANSYS environment that we can. I'm going to make a folder that I'll be using for any of the videos that I make on this content. This will be my main working directory. I'll open up a terminal window to start getting started. Now here we have a couple things to install. Uh, we'll use pip for this. You can use conda. You, um, there's various ways that you can find on the PyAnsys website. I'll use pip. Of course, install uh, pyaedt. And just to be sure, I want to make sure that we get all the packages. And once that's done, I want to just make sure that we have the latest version, pip install update pyadt. And I'm already good there. If you don't have it already, I would get some of the other basic packages like numpy, matplotlib, etc. Last thing I want to note is when you see me running Python, I'll probably be using a Jupyter notebook. I'm a big fan of Jupyter. When you check out the example problems that are on the PyAnsys website, you can download them as Jupyter Notebooks. Once you have it downloaded and installed, you can open it up just with Jupyter Notebook. Your PowerShell or your command window will turn into the kernel that you can then monitor. Very helpful. And in your web browser, you'll see your Jupyter Notebook open up. This is just my empty folder right here. Of course, I can start a new Python um, notebook here. We'll call this one control program because that is the example that I'll be taking us through. Okay, let's get into it. Make sure that everything is set up properly. If I start importing everything, I shouldn't have an issue. So I'm going to set up my first block to um, import all of the required things. If you want to see what these functions are, it's very easy to pull up the API and search for them. Okay, I just want to run this real fast. Yep, no issues. We're good to go. Next cell block in my Jupyter Notebook. We're going to start turning things on. So first thing that I want to do, I will set my AEDT version. Then I'm going to turn non-graphical mode off. That way we can see what we're doing. But this is something that isn't necessary at all unless you want to visualize what's going on. Next, we need to download the example file that we're going to be using. This 
it's just going to create a temporary folder to put it in and the, these last two files are um, the commands to download the control program and the AEDT file. And we can check these just to make sure they're working. So next we just need to open up Maxwell2D with the, the you know default command. Project name we've set, this is going to be our control program demo. The specified version we've also set, 2024R1. And this not a new desktop session, just says open it in a new AEDT window rather than one you already have open. And finally, yes, non-graphical equals non-graphical. This is a common copy-paste block, which is why, you know, it's pretty typical to set this up here. Now, we can run this. And check it out. New AEDT session is starting on this port. And on my other window, it's opening up. I'll bring it over here. Now we can see on the left that there's several different designs in this project. If we didn't know that, if we were working in just non-graphical mode, then it's pretty easy uh, to check. So we already have Maxwell 2D open up here. This project um, is the active project. So I can now just call this method, which is design list. And there we go, time step, flux derivative, no control, voltage control, and 2D JFV. Now that we can see what designs we have, it's really easy to open one up. Just another method, m2d dot set active design. And here, we wanna grab one of these. We'll do the first one. And you can see it opened it up right away. If you already knew the name that you wanted to open, you can just open in this first command. Project name is here, ADT file. We can add in another line here. That is design name. And of course, you know, we would put whichever one that you wanted. With that loaded, you can see in the API that there really is just so much that we can do. If we need to start, you know, analyzing from certain points, we can just look at the analysis. If we want to start assigning coils, currents, voltages, material properties, uh, you get it. If you can think of something that you want to do, search it up in the API and find the, find the way to do it. We'll end up going through a lot of these as we explore the API, but for now, the original goal was to learn how to, you know, turn on control programs from within uh, Pi ADT. So let's finish doing that. What we want to do is let's enable our setup for this active design. Setup, of course, m2d.setups, and just the, the default one. And what you would see here, if I had that open, was this setup um, becoming activated. So all we have to do next is analyze it. And that is solving. So something that's really funny, I like that you can go m2d dot is there a simulation running uh, it's something like that hold on oh that's what it is it's us close are there simulations running and it finished in the back so it's <laughs> gonna say oh man m2d my favorite property is gone it's okay Anyway, let me get rid of this code block. This ran, so now we can um, check out the results. We'll name it solution m2d. So these are some of our post operations, post get solution data.
and we will, you know, just plot the flux linkage over time for this one. Okay. So yeah, what I have here is um, I'm going to grab the solution data of the flux linkage of winding one, and I'm going to plot over, you know, all the variations we swept time. So the um, primary sweep that I'm going to set is time. And we can plot that. I think it's just plot sol. Oh, sorry, uh, sol dot plot. And let's do it. And there we have it. Small warning message, just because we didn't fill out all the information on the legend, but that's okay. The last thing that we'll do is save the project, new cell. MTD, it's just save project. Nice, save correctly. And finally, because we like to treat our kernel well, MTD dot release desktop. Try not to forget this step, uh, releasing the desktop frees up system resources and ensures that the application doesn't remain open unnecessarily which can you know, lead to performance issues and license issues and the like. So always release your desktop when you're done. That's it for this one. It already went quite a bit longer than I thought it was going to go. We'll probably have just a few more of these, um, just covering a lot of like the basic operations, how to you know, use this in a way that's gonna optimize uh, your, your workflow. It's all gonna culminate in us being able to extract field information from mesh nodes and us being able to uh, model core loss in really significant ways in both 2D and 3D. We're going to be taking a look at some different core loss or custom core loss models and we're going to make a core loss model that's like the Steinman's model but includes um, anisotropy, different values of loss in different directions. So if you have any questions or if you have anything that you want me to cover, especially when it comes to PyAnsys or PyADT, let me know in the comments below. This has been Ian from Ozen Engineering. Thanks for watching.